Here we are at our 4.6 video notes. We're kind of just summarizing overall the criteria of these different solutions um, and seeing a little bit more complex functions, still linear, but um, some of them even a little bit rational later on. But uh, essentially starting off, what creates a one solution, no solution, and infinitely many solution scenarios? And so from class, we've already kind of talked a little bit about this, where your one solution scenario has to have the same slope, I'm sorry, rather different slope. So different slope. And it can be the same y-intercept, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so same or different y-intercept. And so let's go ahead and see this in action. We have 2x minus 3y equals 6. Um, we could convert this into y equals mx plus b. I think that's going to be the most relevant. You could also use intercepts. But we'll go ahead and convert this to y equals mx plus b. So we've got negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. And then we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 3. And so we end up with y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. Okay. For our other one, we have our x plus 2y equals 4. We're going to go ahead and subtract the x term over. And then divide both sides by 2. So y equals negative one half x plus two. So as we can see from the red and the blue linear equations, they have they end up having different slopes and different y-intercepts. And so that's going to create that one solution scenario. So we'll go ahead and grab the blue one first. We've got our y-intercept two. And then from that kicks in the slope. So down one to the right two, down one to the right two, and so on. We also know we can go this way too, up one to the left two. And so as a result, for our blue line, there is our linear. For the red one, down two, and then up two over three. And up two over three. And so we can see we are in fact crossing at this one solution, which is located right there. All right, so again, though, the criteria is they have to have different slopes, otherwise um, then they'll end up with being parallel. So that's really the key there. And the y-intercept, those can be the same or different. That doesn't matter because your intersection point could actually be creating that one solution if they happen to be crossing there. Now for the no solution, we end up with, um, they have to have the exact same slope in that scenario. So same slope. And they also have to have a different y-intercept. A different y-intercept. And to really help illustrate this, let's say this is our top function. We're going to go ahead and, I'm sorry, our red one rather. We're going to go ahead and subtract the 3x over. So we have 2y equals negative 3x minus 6. And then divide both sides by 2. And so when we do that, we end up with y equals negative 3 halves x minus 3. And for our blue one, we've got 3x plus 2y. We're going to go ahead and subtract the 3x over. And then divide both sides by 2. And so when we do that, we have y equals negative 3 halves x plus six. So they have the exact same slope, negative three halves, but they have different y-intercepts here. 
And so if we go to graph this, we've got, we'll stick with the blue one for now, down three to the right two, and so on, down three to the right two. For our blue line, we would expect to see something like this. And for our red one, the y-intercept is negative three. And from that, again, same exact slope, down three to the right two, or up three to the left two. So because they have that same exact slope, they're rising and running at the same rates, but because they have the different y-intercept, that's what's gonna create that no solution scenario. Now, lastly, the infinitely many solutions, this is where they have to have the exact same slope and the same y-intercept. So same slope and the same y-intercept. So pretty much everything is the exact same. So again, if we take our red line and I'm putting it in y equals mx plus b, I would subtract the three x over. So negative y equals negative three x plus six, divide both sides by this negative one. We end up then with y equals three x minus six. And then for our blue line, we've got our six y, we're gonna go ahead and subtract over. So we have negative two y equals negative six x plus 12. And then we divide both sides by that coefficient. But in the end, we still have three x plus two y. I'm sorry, three x rather, and then plus, no, minus six. Same exact line in the end. Uh, just graphically, boom, there's our y-intercept, up three over one, up three over one, up three over one, up three over one. And so for our blue line, there it is. And the red one is literally the exact same. So for that criteria, you'd have to have the same slope and the same y-intercept because they're the same line. All right, so again, recapping, those are the different criterias for which scenario you're in, okay? Now, with that information, we're gonna go ahead and try and figure out how many solutions do the following systems have? What I want for you guys to do is pause the video and give it a shot and see what you come up with for these three. All right, now that you've had the opportunity to try these, as we look at the first one, again, he's gonna be our red equation. We've got our three X minus five Y equals seven. We're gonna subtract the three X term over. Get negative five Y equals negative three X plus seven, and then divide both sides by that coefficient. The so Y is equal to three fifths X, and then um, minus seven over five. For our blue line, we're gonna subtract the four X over. We have negative six Y equals negative four X plus nine. Divide that coefficient. So Y is equal to two thirds X uh, minus three over two. So because they have different slopes, different y-intercepts, this would be a one solution. Somewhere they are going to cross. Now, as we look at this one, again, here's our red line. We have four X minus two Y equals three. We subtract the 4x over. Again, putting it in y equals mx plus b just to kind of look at our slopes and our y-intercepts. And then we divide both sides by that coefficient. We have 2x minus 3 halves. For our blue line, we're going to go ahead and add the 8x term over. We have 4y equals 8x 
sine of 6, and then divide both sides by 4. And when we simplify that, we end up with 2x, and then minus 3 over 2. And so those look like they're the exact same line. So as a result, this would be infinitely many solutions. Yeah, because they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. It's the same line. On this last one, looks like uh, the first one's already in y equals mx of c, so we'll go ahead and put the second one in y equals mx of c. End up with 2y equals 4x plus 12. We divide both sides by 2. Now it's in y equals mx plus b. And we, no we do notice, hey, they do have the exact same slope, but a different y-intercept, negative 6 versus positive 6. So those are two lines that will be parallel and will never cross. So that would be your no solution. All right. So again, there is example one. Go ahead, feel free to pause the video if you have any questions. All right, now we're looking at five through seven, where it says for each of the equations below, write your own second equation that would make a no solution scenario, okay? So go ahead, pause the video, create something that would work and fit with that scenario, no solution. All right, now to create that no solution scenario, you, you may obviously have very different numbers, but the key is that they have to have the exact same slope and the different y-intercept. So again, for no solution, same slope, different y-intercept. And so as a result, we have y equals, we have to have the same slope, so 5 fourths x, but then I might go with plus 2, and that would work. Those would be two lines that never cross. Um, for the next one, again, you have to have the same slope. So we have negative 8x, but a different y-intercept, so maybe plus 7. And then for this last one, we do have to create it in y equals mx plus b. So if we simply subtract the 4x term over, end up with y equals negative 4x plus 7. And for a no solution scenario, I might go with y equals negative 4x plus 2. Now well, we did that one. Let's do plus 1. All right. So again, same exact slopes, just different y-intercepts. What I want for you guys to do is pause the video and please try out and think about 8 and 9. These are two scenarios where um, it's kind of using what we were talking about from our 4.4 uh, 4 and 4. Point, uh, yeah, especially 4.4 video notes. Um, so define your variables just so that we're all on the same page. As you guys go to define, in class, we've oftentimes used x is the first number. And y is the second number. So let's stick with that. And so that'll be applied for 8 and 9, okay? So go ahead, pause the video, and see if it's possible for these different situations. All right, so now that you have had the opportunity to discuss this a little bit, um, the sum of two numbers is 8. So we'll go ahead and start with x plus y is equal to 8. And then for the second one, is it possible for the sum of those two numbers to also be 10? So x plus y is 10. Now, there is a couple different ways that you could proceed with this, um, but let's just kind of stick with our slope intercept form. We would, for the red one, subtract the x term over and get y equals negative 1x plus 8. And then we're going to go ahead and do that for the blue one as well. So minus the x term over, we get y equals negative 1x plus 10. So because they have the exact same slope, negative 1, but a different y-intercept, 8 versus 10, that is your no solution scenario. So there is no way that these two numbers could ever possibly 
um, do both of these things. They can't add up to eight and then at the same time add up to 10. So this is not possible. Now, another way that you could view it is, is through elimination method. And your mind may have actually kind of headed that way. And just to kind of help bring that connection with previous topics that we've seen in the past where, oh yeah, that makes more sense now if we tried the elimination. So let's say X plus Y equal to 10. Um, you just need to make one of these negatives for a variable to cancel. And so let's just say we multiplied the top one all by negative one. We would end up with our negative one X minus one Y equals negative eight for the red one. And then if we go ahead and combine, well, we see that our X's are gonna cancel and we see that our Y's are gonna cancel. And so as a result on the left side, we don't really have anything. We would just have zero as the number there. But on the right side, we end up with 10 plus negative eight is two. And we know that zero is not the same as two. So as a result, this would not be possible. So just kind of bringing back those previous topics when we did elimination method. Um, but no, for number eight, it is not possible. And that's two ways that you can kind of see why it's not possible. Even if you actually tried substitution as well, you'd kind of end up with this scenario too, in the end where it's just not possible. Now for nine, again, same exact variables. So we'll just kind of go into it. So we've got the sum of the two numbers is still eight. So X plus Y is eight. And then is it possible for the difference of the two numbers to also be eight? So X minus Y is eight. So let's go ahead and see this one. For the red one, we're gonna go ahead and subtract the X term over, end up with Y equals negative one X plus eight. For our blue guy, we're gonna subtract the X term over and then divide this coefficient. So we end up with y equals positive one x minus eight. Now here they end up with different slopes and different y-intercepts. So as a result, at some point, yes, these two lines will cross. You'll end up with some x, y where the two lines, two scenarios given, will end up meeting, and then that would actually be your X and your Y, your first number and your second number. So yes, this is possible. With one solution. And you could continue on from doing like substitution method if you wanted. Um, this one is I would say a little bit more design for the elimination. So you got your X plus Y equals eight. And then the difference of them, X minus Y is equal to eight. The reason why this is a little bit more set up for that elimination is we can spot, oh, look, our Y's are gonna cancel right away. So if we go, if we go ahead and bring these together, it looks like the Y's will drop, end up with a total of two X's equals 16. And then we can find X right away. So X comes out to be eight. And then we can find out what Y is. So looks like we could use the red one. It's gonna be zero. So eight plus some Y equals eight minus the eight over Y is equal to zero. So it looks like our first number is eight and then the second number is zero. All right, go ahead, feel free to pause the video if you have any questions at all. All right, now moving on, 
These are those K questions that especially you see a little bit more in the honors groups. And so for our first situation, we're looking for that one solution. Now to do that, we've got our red equation and our blue one. Um, we're gonna go ahead and convert to Y equals MX plus B to kind of help us out there. So firstly, we're gonna go ahead and subtract the two X over end up with negative KY equals negative two X plus four, and then divide both sides. This K is representing a coefficient. So just imagine it as a number. So negative K, we're dividing on both sides. So now Y is equal to, and then we'll clean up the signs a little bit as well. So negative divided by negative would be a positive. And then this one would just be negative four over K. Okay. So there is our red equation just with K. Again, K is just the number. So imagine this is just for the sake of argument. Imagine it's like five, okay? Now for the blue one, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to put it into Y equals MX plus B. So we've got negative, we're gonna subtract the X term over. And so when we do that, we've got 3y equals negative x plus 6. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. We have y equals negative 1 third x plus 2. Now, 2 is the same as 2 over 1, and that can be helpful later on. But essentially, in the end, for our one solution scenario, it is pivotal that really the slope is is this is different okay and so as a result we're going to say to make it different we're going to take our slope negative one third from the blue line and we're going to say is not equal to the two over k number okay because these two slopes cannot be the same the y-intercept it doesn't really matter as much so what we care is that K is not the same. And so now we're gonna go ahead and solve. Um, we'll multiply this one by three on both sides, as well as the K on both sides. So essentially we're clearing fractions with that LCM. And so when we do that, we end up with negative one K equals six. And then we divide negative one on both sides. So we end up then with K can be pretty much anything except for negative six. The moment it becomes negative six is the moment we have um, not the one solution scenario. Now we go to no solution. This again is where we've got the same slope. but they also have to have the different y-intercept. So what I would like for you guys to do now is to go ahead and try and figure out what is the K value that has to fit that scenario. So again, we've already converted to the Y equals on X plus B for both of them. And for the same slope, we've got our negative one third from the blue line is going to be equal to our two over K. If you're in this situation, you're gonna end up with the same exact value, um, but it's this time is that because you're actually aiming for the no solution, they have to have the same slope and that's why it's going to be equal to a two. So as a result, K in the end is still gonna come out to be negative six, but that's actually what you're hoping for. Now, it is important that you do have a different y-intercept. So let's go ahead and make sure that that also does happen. Because if it has both, then it's going to be the same line. Now, we do know that our y equals 2 over k minus 4 over k. If we were to take that negative 6 and we dump it in, we end up with y equals 2 over negative 6 minus four over negative six. And so we do get that same exact slope when we simplify this up. So we have the negative one third X 
and then plus two thirds. Okay. Now notice the red line and our blue line, they do have the exact same slope and our Y intercepts are still different though. So that's good, you can do that. But K would have to be negative six for that situation. Now we get to the many solutions. Well, from our blue line, we've got Y equals negative one third X plus two. And for the many solutions to occur, you do need to have the exact same slope Same slope, and you also have to have the same y-intercept. Now, again, we found k has to be negative six to create that same slope. So this is still at play. But when we have that same slope with that k value, Again, that's going to impact your y-intercept as well when you plug it in right there. And in the end, our y-intercept has to be the same for the many solutions, but unfortunately with that k value, you, you, you can't, like it won't ever happen. So as a result, the many solutions, this is not possible. So in order to create that same slope, k had to be negative six, but as a result, that's also impacting the y-intercept. And unfortunately, for that many solutions, it's you can't have both. Okay. Go ahead, feel free to pause the video if you have any questions at all on example two. All right. What I would love to do is we're actually going to, we'll come back to example three. Example four is actually kind of a nicer starter one. What I'd love for you guys to do is pause the video, give it a fair shot and see what you can come up with. Um, three and four are definitely challenged ones, especially example three. So go ahead, pause the video, give this one a shot and kind of see what you can come up with and create. Now for example four, this one is you know, looking at it is more in that, hey, we probably need to use elimination method to solve for it. So as a result, notice how this variable is isolated along with him. That's good, but we have the negative three X times Y. When you see an interaction like that, it might be helpful to try and eliminate those X, Y, like when they were getting multiplied like that. So as a result, we're gonna try and aim for the x times y part. And to do that, we're gonna multiply this by positive three on the bottom. And so when we do that, we end up with three x plus three x y equals three. And then for this one, we'll go ahead and just copy it down. So two x minus three xy equals negative 13. And the reason why we aim for that xy, we wanna try and eliminate that because there are two different variables with that term. And our goal is to try and isolate and get one single variable only so that we can solve for that one variable. So that's really kind of the why we went for the x times y term. We don't want multiple variables involved because then you can't really solve for it. Now we end up with 5x, these cancel, equals negative 10. And now we can solve for x. So it looks like x comes out to be negative 2. Now we'll go ahead and solve just like typical. So let's take our, looks like the bottom one looks the easiest. So x plus xy equals one, and we're gonna take him and dump that X in. Now notice how it's in multiple places, so we're gonna plug, plug it in essentially into both. And so when we do that, we have negative two plus negative two times some Y equals one. And as a result, we're gonna go ahead now and add this two term over. 
we get negative 2y equals 3. And so now we'll go ahead and divide. So y equals negative 3 halves. So our point comes out to be negative 2, comma, negative 3 halves. Feel free to pause the video if you have any questions at all on example four. All right, now looking at example three. These are what we call rational functions. Um, you'll see them a little bit more in like your algebra two classes, uh, but this is a great, excellent preview still using the math from algebra one that we've seen. Now, as you, as you look at this example three, I want you to pause the video, try and come up with what you could possibly do. And I have full faith, especially historically students coming up with this, um, thinking about what we've done in class in the past to help them out. All right, so go ahead, pause the video and try out example three. All right, now in looking at example three, this is actually a pretty tough challenge one. So um, hopefully most of us where we were thinking, maybe looking at the LCM to kind of clear out fractions, and to do that, we have an X, a Y, and a five. So our LCM that we're gonna clear fractions with is actually all three of those. So five X, Y is what we're gonna multiply everything by. Now, when we do that, we're gonna multiply this top one by five X, Y. And so as we go to do that, we end up with, when we distribute to the first term, x is going to cancel with the x, leaving you the 5y times 1. So that would just be our 5y. When we distribute to the next term, the y is going to cancel out with your 5xy with the y, leaving you your 5x, pretty much the extra leftover parts that is not on the denominator. And the three times the five X would give us 15 X equals on the right side. Looks like five is gonna cancel with the five. And so we end up then with the X Y times 16. So 16 X Y. Now that you've seen that, go ahead and try it to the blue one. If you were not able to kind of create that, Go ahead and give that a shake with the blue one. All right, as we look at our blue one, our LCM for the denominator is gonna be, looks like an X, a Y, and really that would just be a one. So one, you don't really have to worry about. And so we would just then have X, Y as our LCM. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and clear our fractions with. So we're gonna multiply both sides by x, y. And when we distribute, x is gonna cancel with the x there. And so leaving us five y. When we distribute to the next term, y is gonna cancel with the y from the x, y, leaving you your x. So plus four times x equals, on the right side, we have 5xy. Go ahead, feel free to pause the video if you have any questions so far. All right, now we're good to go ahead and eliminate a variable. Now this can be done a variety of different ways, but as we kind of look at our coefficients, um, it looks like our Y is pretty set and primed to kind of go for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this bottom one by negative one on both sides. And when we do that, we have negative five Y minus four X equals negative five X Y. And then for our red line, we're just going to bring it down. We've got 5y plus 15x equals 16xy. 
we can go ahead and eliminate these. And now leaving us 11x equals 11xy. Now, it is tempting for a lot of students to say, oh, I can possibly divide both sides by 11x and try this move. Now, as a result, you would end up with one equals y. Um, when you start dividing by a term, like a variable like that, notice this part, that can get a little, I would say, dicey in terms of math, okay? Um, it can be done, but oftentimes there are better ways to kind of help justify and prove things. And as a result, this part, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna sub we're gonna subtract the 11x term over, the 11xy term over. And when we do that, we have 11x minus 11xy. And what's left over on the right side would just be zero. So this is just kind of like a better way to prove what our values actually are, okay? Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is factor out this 11x. And when we do that, we've got one minus y equals zero. Now, later on, and this is what makes this a challenge. So this is kind of like a tier three level question. Um, so it's kind of just giving you guys some exposure to it. In the future this year, we're going to talk about what's called the zero product property. But essentially, you're taking each part and setting it equal to zero. And then when you go to solve, you can divide a number, zero divided by a number. That's a little bit more doable rather than like zero divided by a, a, a variable. So x comes out to be zero. And then on this one, we could subtract the one over negative y equals negative one, divide negative one coefficient. This is just a little bit more of a better way, safer way to prove what your values are, okay? And so as a result, zero comma one would be that final answer. Now, again, if you were able to kind of, especially get to like right here, great you know after that that's kind of the new stuff the trickier parts but as long as you're able to kind of get to that star like right here that's mainly what i'm caring about for this one okay all right so that is our 4.6 again that last one example three very tough one so if you did not see it from the beginning don't sweat it um, hopefully though, example four, you guys were able to get, but yeah, that is our 4.6 video notes.